I think I got it. Yeah. That's... It runs clear around castles without taking a step. Very good. That's that poison. Um, we could restring a bow or two, right? No. I used our aventurine potion or whatever it's called. Um, honestly, I don't know if I care too much about that crap. All right. Um, well, maybe we'll just run into Caval Keep real quick lack here. Is that the way? Yes. Or is it? Oh, it's not, but there's something over here. Might wanna... Oh, there's more to the map, apparently. I thought Caval Keep would be our final destination in this area. Maybe we can go to Kenting Rush. We can rush for Kents. Um, let's check this out. That's an abandoned house. Well, that's fantastic. Let's Let's go here. A girl crossed the fields, lacking the arrogant bearing of her father. She moved like a wisp of smoke, her tread so light, it seemed she floated rather than walked through the rustling weeds. Flittering to Owen's side, she kissed him lightly on the cheek. Whoa! Put on a shirt! Is that a nipple? No, it's not. Okay. Ugin Corvallis. Did I ever tell you that you show up the strangest of times? It's nice to see you. That's his cousin. Weird. Gross. Don't, don't, don't be dipping your pail in that well, Owen. Um, what are you doing wandering around unescorted? Well, I guess, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. I projected that on him. It says more about me than it does about him. Honestly, you astonish me. By your age, most girls have the common sense to realize there are dangerous types wandering around in the open, like me. How's that for an introduction? You're only four years older than me, Owen, and I don't see that my age has anything to do with it. I just like to come out here to think when I have a problem that won't solve itself otherwise. Yeah, I like to hang out by this abandoned shack. Real safe. Um, it also gives me a safe harbor away from Father when he's on one of his raging fits. Is he on one at the moment? One of the worst I've ever seen. He's fired the entire kitchen staff, dismissed the guard, thrown out all five of my maids. He's been that way ever since, or since about dinner time last evening. I tried to ask him why he was so upset, but he would only tell me that he had received some very bad news from a, uh, wait for it, messenger regarding a financial arrangement which he had made. He might also be pissed off that his keep has vanished into thin air. Just a hunch. Have any idea what the note said? Who knows? He's always on about conspiracy this, conspiracy that. It's like he's always afraid someone's about to find out some dire secret about the family when he when he's when there's nothing to hide. It's getting terribly repetitive, really. So you have this frightful look on your face, as if there's something you're afraid to speak to me about. What is it? Um The murder. You'll forgive us if we look a little ragged, but we're trying to figure out about a murder that took place down in Romney. It was really more of a massacre, actually. Um, we, multiple people killed. Um, we've been searching for a little while. Do you think the murderer escaped to Cabal Keep? We're not sure. All we know at the moment is it may have had something to do with the brass spyglass or a silver spider we found near the bodies. I don't suppose the spyglass had a star inscribed on it, did it? I think it does. I can't recall. Why? Would that be important? <clears throat> For someone who's a part of the family, you certainly don't seem to know much about the family lore. We used to have a spyglass that sat in a glass case in the entryway of the keep. There was a legend that if a person knew the right things to think, they could use the spyglass to spy on the minds of others. Hmm. It was in the family for generations, but it disappeared about the same time that Neville was killed in the wine cellar all those years ago. Father accused the workman of having stolen it. The workmen. So workmen would possibly be in a guild of some kind? That's a thought. And what things was the person to think to make the spyglass work? I don't know. Neville used to tease me and told me he knew what to think and that he could use it, but he never did. It was only a legend after all. Well, let's see if we can get some general updates. So when is a suitor going to snatch you up? Are there any that are even in good standing? There are two, neither of whom father likes, but... Then again, he never likes anyone I do. One is Myron, my father's solicitor, <laughs> who travels door to door and sells fart juice, um, who lives just outside of Caval Keep with his daughter Amy. He does have a minor claim to nobility because his 
brother is an earl someplace, but father thinks his connections are too tenuous for us to consider. And what about the second suitor? He's a businessman from Kenting Rush named Navon de Sandow. We've seen the name, other than in the note we just read earlier. Um, this, um... That's interesting. But he's apparently gun in for him. The Count is trying to kill him. <laughs> or not kill him, uh, drive him insane. I like him, though. He can be a bit intense at times. We like to talk, and he's always asking me some point about mythology or another. He doesn't mind a girl who reads. Well, I do. Good day. <laughs> As nice as it's been to talk to you again, talking to you again, whatever, we have to be on our way. Promise me you'll find someone to look after you soon. I would appreciate it if you stopped fretting about me as if I were a child, but I'll take the promise only so long as you make the same promise. Very well. You have my word as the son of the Count of Tyburn. Goodbye, Eugene. Ugly. It's <laughs> a hilarious name. And this would be Cabal Keep. The town of Cabal Keep. It seems like the actual keep is gone. <laughs> All right, let's go take a look. Room. Tucked away in the Midkemian countryside like a hidden treasure, Cabal Keep was a rustic ray of sunshine in the stony enclosure of the Kenting Hills. Enclosed on all sides by a low stone wall, the sheep herding community was unpresumptuous in most respects. Its only true bout of vanity being the small fountain which had been constructed in the village square. Bed and breakfasts are affordably priced. You can purchase a rustic meal at many of the fine eateries and treacherias. Consider visiting the Chamber of Commerce for advice on local hikes. And below he couldn't see anything, but he heard a gentle bumping below as the bucket rode on the crest of the deep water. This is not a well. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> That's too tedious to even worry about. Um, let's go to the inn. Poke that guy. Uh, it's generic stuff. Let's bard. Boom! 143. That's a lot. It's another gambler. Poke. And that's generic stuff. Same stuff. Yeah. Let's talk to this guy. Owen's stomach grumbled. Waiting until another patron had finished placing his order for a roast hen and a tankard of ale, the senor beckoned to the tavern keeper away from his other duties, hoping both for information and perhaps a bit to eat. Peter the Grey! That's not really very gray hair, though. I don't know why he has that name. Maybe it is about his moral ambiguity? Evening, gents. Just let me know if you need anything. Oh, the three of us are fine, but you sound as if you've had better days. Is something bothering you, friend? I don't suppose you would be interested in becoming a scully, would you, lad? I can't honestly say it's on my list of ambitions at the moment, no. Having problems with the hell? I think that's a, a scullery um, maid or servant. I wouldn't call it problems so much as disappointments. I don't know what to say to the lad. He's good enough... He's a good enough boy, kind, honest, hardworking, but all in all, he doesn't have the faintest idea which end of the pan's the handle. I've tried for weeks to teach him how to cook so the wife and I could take some time off, but when it comes to cooking, he's as dense as the thunder hell. I'll just take your word for it, that's really dense. I don't know what else to do, but enough about me. What can Peter do for you? <laughs> Alright, um... Let's ask about the Nighthawks. Have you ever seen any Nighthawks in the area? Ishep forfend the Guild of Death? I wouldn't let them into my establishment. When one of my patrons comes into the inn, he comes in breathing, and I like them leaving in the same condition, alive. Please tell me you're not looking to hire one. Hire one? I might be. There's someone I've been having problems with. Not another word of it, not another word of it. Whatever grievance you have with this man, I don't want to know. If you're looking for a contract or contact... You'll not find one here. If you're looking for a criminal, try the pub in Prankstone. We've been there, and I don't remember what we <laughs> encountered there. Um, let's ask about Navon. I hear that the Count isn't too thrilled with one of Ugin's suitors, a fellow by the name of Navon du Sandow. Know anything about him? It's a pity he doesn't like the man. He's perfectly charming, handsome, mannered, if you, don't, if you haven't crossed him, but 
zealous if he thinks you've, you're doing something wrong to someone. He'd be just the cat's whiskers for you, Gein. <laughs> cat's whiskers. Um, any idea where we, we could find him? He's a businessman, so it may be difficult to track him down. He flies by jet from Kenting Rush to here, and it takes him three minutes. Uh, you might try asking the taverns there. Okay. So, Barkeep, what sort of fare do you offer in the duck's head? Duck brains, what do you expect? Only the best in all the kingdom. What can Peter interest you in today? A bit of roast chicken with a hunk of cheese? Spitted roast with steamed potato eyes? Or what ho? I'll have a hoe, please. Um, the house special, a duck baked in a lemons. <laughs> what does that mean? And stuffed with rose peel crumbs. How does that strike you? I bet it would hurt if it struck me. Um, I don't suppose any of those come in servings for the road. Oh my goodness, no. We can prepare rations for you at the very reasonable cost of 14 gold per pack. That's not bad, but I don't need rations right now. I'll let you off the hook, but just so long as you remember the duck's head after a drink and something to eat. Um, we can find out how much it costs to take a nap here. I wish there was something I could do for you, but the only room open in the duck's head is the scullery. We wouldn't mind sharing it with someone. Truly, I would like to help you, but the rooms I do have are let, have to let are full up, and I don't think my scully would want to share. The room is only just large enough for him to squeeze into, and it's a tight fit as it is. With three of you in there, we'd have to stack you like ricks of wood. I'm sorry. Well, okay. We have other matters to attend to. Talk to this guy. Oh, yeah, we already did that. Um, not much going on here. Um, let's go to the shop. Sign of the sword. Offload that at the very least. Um, will you accept our shell? Oh my god, why did I hold on to those for so long? They are next to worthless. Well, we got to offload quite a bit of our goods here. I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, let's see what he actually can sell us. Um, how much is a whetstone? You know what? I feel dumb even buying one. Well, it's two gold. That's not much. Let's actually buy it. Fuck. <laughs> I made him mad. All right, that's probably fine. Um, yeah, let's get out of here, and then let's... Um, hmm, door number one or door number two? Let's go into this little house. No one answered James's persistent knocking, and we know how annoying those are. After circling the house, he announced either the occupants slipped out, or they're ignoring us, or they're stone-dead sleepers, or they're just stone-dead. Whatever the case may be, we would probably have better luck if we moved on. Their knock was answered by a servant at this house. Uh, yes, judging by the disarray of her hair and the night shift, which the girl was wearing, working on the night moves. Night shift. Is that really what that's called? If it's a like a night shirt, perhaps? Whatever. The servant had likely been disturbed from an otherwise restful sleep. Sorry to have wakened you, James apologized. Count Corvallis is away at the moment, and his daughter Ugin is abed, the girl said. <laughs> You're wrong about that. Apparently trying to forestall any further questions. I'm afraid you will have to come calling at a decent hour. Goodbye. Wait! Jamming his foot in the door before it swang closed again. James exhaled with pain as his foot was caught in the jam. Where is the Count? Where is that the Count has gone? Where is it that the Count has gone? Blah. Out, the girl said angrily. He sometimes goes hunting at night in the original lands of the keep. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Then we might find him there? The girl shrugged. Doubtful. And I wouldn't advise trying. He keeps a guard on his land as <laughs> out for poachers. Whoopsies. Sometimes they attack without asking questions. Yeah. 
That sounds about right. Uh, kicking James's foot out of the jam, the servant girl bid them to go away and close the door. Okay, well, we'll just leave Cavill Keep for the time being. Having uh, improved, increased, improved, improved, increased our uh, abilities. We'll sleep until daybreak. And then we'll go back in. Just on the outskirts of town, because they don't have a decent inn here. Actually. Oh, here we go. James aroused the occupants. The door cracked open with a small squeak, just enough space to allow a pale-eyed girl in a dust-caked skirt to peek out at them. She studied them with a doubtful look, hesitant to let the strangers in. Yes, what is it? Stepping around the seigneur, Owen peered at the girl with a puzzled expression, then brightened. Miri? It's okay, they may look a little rough, but they're with me. <laughs> Without a word, the servant girl stepped out of the way, allowing the three of them to follow her into the foyer of the manor. Excusing herself, after having ripped a colossal fart, she scurried off to fetch her master who was located in the rear apartments. Following what sounded like a distant argument, a dark-haired man swept into the room, a look of annoyance set in his features. Shooting a glance of mild hostility first at Owen and then at the Mordhel, he turned on the seigneur. Oh my goodness gracious me, look at what a fancy gentleman we have here. Kindly tell me, sir, what is it I have done to make myself so attractive? <laughs> well, you know, your hair looks great, your, your collar is immaculate. Um, <clears throat> what is it I have done to make myself so attractive to the minuscule of the world? For the moment, or from the moment I first stepped from my bedchamber this morning, I've had servants swarming about me like nits and bothersome relations at my ankles. Will you kindly leave me in peace? We have very grave business to attend to, and I must speak to you. Whatever you must do, I'm quite certain does not involve me. I don't care what the nature of your business is about, Senor. I have other concerns. Is that so? Well, have you concerns above and beyond the Prince of Crondor? Is that good enough for you, you regal... Elitist fuck? If so, I shall make most eager account of them for him when I return. Go on and spell them out so I may take them down. I'm sure Arutha will be fascinated. The prince, you say? Please understand that there are things going on that I am not entirely at liberty to discuss. Suffice to say that I have had something of a disagreement with the priests of the Temple of Kahuli and Kenting Rush over a private matter. So if you may excuse my outburst, I would be happy to be of service to the prince. What precisely can I do for you? Um, it's interesting that Owen isn't talking to him. He's his nephew. Whatever. Oh, there's Owen. Not that I dislike your new house here, but what happened to the keep? The townhouse's temporary lodging nephew. We have no intention of staying in Cavill like common folk. As for the keep... One night three years ago, an inept chambermaid left a lamp unattended by the tapestries which hung on the west wall. You remember them, don't you, Owen? Centuries old, woven by the f finest weavers in all the kingdom. In seconds, they went up in flames and they took the rest of the keep with it. They burned stone? What kind of tapestries were these? I remember having heard something about a fire, but I hadn't known the keep had burned to the ground. It's a miracle that you all survived. Were you able to save anything? Sounds like insurance fraud. We saved ourselves, Owen. The only thing is of true value that were within the castle. <laughs> you jerk. It is regrettable that the girl who was responsible for the blaze was killed, but Ugin and I both escaped it hale and hearty. I ordered only the stones of the foundation left behind as the tunnel mouths and the tunnel mouths sealed. Oh, we progress forward with our lives. So those stones might have tunnels beneath them. Why go to all that trouble? I would really prefer not to speak of this anymore. For no particular reason. I'm not hiding anything. Uh, it brings me great grief, and I would prefer to discuss other matters. Yeah, sure. Let's ask about Navon. You have a reputation for disliking Navon de Sandow. Anything you would like to, you would care to share with us? And what makes you believe I have animosity for Ugin's suitor? Oh, we're going to just come right out with it. Your petition to Kahuli. You asked for Navon to be... How did you put it? Driven mad until he is gray with age? Who did you pay to get that note? Do you have spies in the temple? Nothing so insidious as that, Count. It seems the petition collectors from the Temple of Kahuli have been slow to, to their duties this year. Yeah, that's what I thought. We found your note and your tithe. If you tell us why you wish to have him driven mad, I will let this little matter slip my mind. Otherwise, I think I can take up the matter with, with Dusando. Do what we will, Senor. 
He already knows my feelings for him. I simply wish him gone from my family and is meddling in our affairs. Day and night, he is at Ugin, asking her questions about the keep and Cavill Run. How extensive were the tunnels that ran under the Great Hall? Have they ever been mapped in any great detail? How much money is in my coffers? What are my schedules? With whom do I meet? How many licks does it take to get to the center of a delicious Cavill Keep? His questions are endless. I lost a wife in that infernal keep, and I wish the matter put to rest. My dog is still underneath. I'm trying to not step on him. I, I wish to hear another question again about it. I never wish to hear another question again about it. Can you understand that, senor? He brings up memories and feelings I wish to leave buried. Buried, you say? Interesting choice of words, Count Corvallis. Yeah. Weren't you a spotter for the Natalie's Rangers when you were younger? I seem to recall you telling stories when I used to visit at the keep. Oh, that was quite a long time ago indeed, before you or Ugin or even Neville had even been born. I still have the eye, too. I can tell you precisely how much a man is carrying by the way he walks, or how good a swordsman he is by the way he pulls it free of the scabbard. Sounds like a useful skill. Any chance you could teach us something about it? Don't be absurd. I spent five years training to be a spotter. <laughs> I didn't even lift. I just spotted. I just like to hang out in the gym and get really close to guys as they did physically exerting exercise. What's the big deal? You expect me for me to teach it all to you in one afternoon? I suppose you're right. I'm already a decent spotter myself. I'll make you a wager, though. You teach us anything I don't already know, and I'll pay you in gold sovereigns. I'll take your wager, but I'm not one to waste my time. <laughs> 200 sovereigns or it's no deal. Will you take that wager? Hmm... Well, I'm a bold gambler at times, but I don't believe I'm feeling quite that bold. It's just as well, for it is a bet that you would have lost. Okay, so that's um, probably going to increase our spotting skill if we do that. Anyways, you've been most helpful, Count Corvallis, but it's time we return to our business. Please give my regards to your daughter, Eugene. Ooh, don't go there, girlfriend. Oh, I shall, senor. Good traveling and keep an eye on my nephew. Oh, I shall, believe me. Goodbye. play with your mustache, sir. Who wants a mustache ride? Alright, let's get out of here before I get in trouble. Can we go in here? Oh, here we go. The door was ajar. They entered the building and were greeted by a man behind a small counter. Can I help you, he inquired. Perhaps you would like to open an account with us? <laughs> it's a Comcast office. Better yet, it's a Time Warner office. Yay! I suppose that would depend on what you could do for us, James said with a smile. They spoke to the man about his money-lending business and the services that he could provide, thanking him for the information and promising to return they left. So that's a counting house or something like that. Um, it's interesting to note that it's there, I suppose. We can't interact with it in any way, but... Um, well, we've explored Cavill Keep. I figured this is probably a good time to take a break. I might have to go back into the uh, backlog of episodes that I recorded earlier, well, the episodes that are already uploaded. I don't mean to imply that I have some secret cache of videos. Um, and kind of get my bearings again about all this nonsense. So uh, I'll do that, and in the meantime, I hope you enjoy this and all my other fine electronic digital wonderments, which is a word that I've just created. Okay, that's it for now. This has been Epic Controller playing Betrayal at Crondor. I'll see you guys later.